Keith Papini begins his Thanksgiving at 3.30 a.m., steeling himself for the Northern California cold and the white hot anguish of the 22nd day without his beloved Sherry. A huge balloon release has been planned in her honor. We wanted to do something very special. A, a real close person in my life mentioned, well, what about a balloon release? You know, we're all looking for you, and here's just a symbol, here's home. And I really like that. The knife thrust pain of missing Sherry is a constant companion, as is his constantly ringing cell phone. Very early in the morning, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day, oh, yeah. you get a phone call. It rang, I think I was shaving at the time. So I kind of looked over and I did not recognize the number. You didn't pick it up. I didn't hear it in time because I only got the, like the last two rings. But that wasn't just any call he missed, it was the call the call he'd been praying for. Immediately after that, my home phone rang. I pick it up, it was my wife screaming in the background, yelling my name. And a CHP officer said, I need you to be calm, I need you to be calm. Well, are you panicked at first that you were hearing her scream? I'm panicked, but I'm happy, because I, I, at this point, this is the first time I've heard her voice, I know she's alive. And you hear? And I hear screaming, so then I get the phone and Oh my God, honey, and of course she's screaming, it's very emotional, and uh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh my God, you're, you're here, you're back, where are you? Where was she? And how did she get free from her captors? Sherry hasn't spoken publicly yet. The account of her release comes solely from what she told police and her husband. She was uh, bound. She had a chain around her waist. She had a bag over her head. I can't remember if it's her right or her left arm was chained to the chain, and her left hand was in the vehicle chained to something. Make sure she didn't jump out of the car. Yeah, they cut something to free her restraint that was holding her into the vehicle, pushed her out, and drove away. Sherry has one free hand and took a bag off of her head. And she has, at this point, has no idea where she's at. She runs to a house and didn't look. What she said was very inviting. She ran to another building could not get into that building, and then ran to the uh, freeway. Stranded in the middle of nowhere, Sherry feels her only chance at rescue is to flag down a motorist on the highway. People were driving past her and not stopping. In her mind, she's frightened, she's scared, she's screamed so much, she said she's coughing up you know, like blood from the screaming, trying to get somebody to you know stop. Just another sign of how my wife is, she's so wonderful, but she, she's like, well, maybe people aren't stopping because I have a chain. It looks like I broke out of prison. So she tried to tuck in the, her chain under her clothes. I, I don't know what reaction anybody has to that, but to me, I'm just like, I'm just what impressed she that she through. thought of that. 4 a.m. and Allison Sutton happens to be driving down I-5 North, one of millions of Americans on the road to visit family for Thanksgiving. I was in the right-hand lane, and I saw a woman frantically waving what looked like a shirt, trying to flag somebody down. She had like a wide-eyed, panicked kind of look. I was startled to see her. It was dark, and she pretty much just came out of nowhere. If I had swerved to the right the least little bit, I would have hit her with my car. I figured if she was willing to risk being hit by a car, trying to get somebody's attention that she must really need some help. I pulled off and I dialed 911. 911 emergency. Rescue workers race to the scene. The silence of the early morning now filling with sirens and the crackle of radio chatter. Attention station eight, unknown medical problem. It's gonna be a northbound I-5, female needs medical attention. She is uh, heavily battered. It's gonna be uh, some sort of an assault. Sherry is found in Yolo County, 150 miles from her Redding, California home. Disoriented from 22 days in captivity, she has no idea what time it is or even what day it is. The paramedics finally were talking to her. They were the first people to tell her, Happy Thanksgiving. And then she's like, oh, it's Thanksgiving night? And they said, no, it's Thanksgiving morning. Now, after that pre-dawn phone call, Keith is breaking every speed limit to get to the hospital where Sherry's been taken. The entire like hospital was like on lockdown. Eventually, they open the door. The woman who's behind the curtain doesn't look like the wife and mother smiling back in countless family photos. One of the officers kind of like braced me and kind of put his arm around me and he said, 
uh, you know, prepare yourself. Um, she's alive and you, you just gotta be happy. And they branded her. So I just wanted to see her. So I, I just ran past everybody and I, you know, throw open the curtain and she was there in a, in a bed and her poor face. And I just hugged her, I just held her. I felt like I hugged her for like 20 minutes. I was so happy that she was there and, and I was just kissing her all over and then I got like nauseated just looking at her. It was so hard for me to see her like that. And... Keith, a couple of times you said her face, her poor face. Yeah. What did you see? The bruises were just intense. The bumps from, you know, being hit and kicked and whatever else. Everybody gets a bruise once in a while, but not these types. I mean, these were hard to look at. Her hair, she's always had very long blonde hair. You know, they, they chopped it off. I just need to know, because I, I was worried that when you first said her face, her face, that they didn't brand her face, right? I will say that no, it's not on, not on her face, no. She lost almost 15% of her body weight oh, yeah. in 22 days. Oh, yeah. That is traumatic physically. Oh, yeah. It made me sick that there is people out there that could do something like this. I just wanted her to hold her. And uh, we just had her, we just embraced each other and cried together. And uh, uh, I mean, I was so happy though. I mean, how do you, how do you explain it? You're upset and everything at what happened, but you're, you're happy. As Thanksgiving morning begins to dawn, the miraculous return of Sherry Papini has not yet reached her Reading community. They gather as planned to release those balloons in the hopes of Sherry's safe homecoming. Two hours later, the community learns their efforts were not in vain. Sherry Papini would be home for Thanksgiving. Sherry Papini, the Shasta County mother, missing for three weeks, has been found alive. The crisis may be over, but the mystery remains. Who took Sherry and why? You're really looking at somebody that's trying to break her will. That's what they do in cults. 